Hello and welcome to this Digi session in Digi Connect Core Firmware Update and Secure Firmware Update, which are included in all the Digi Connect Core System of Module software packages. Today I will show you how to set up the Connect Core 8 and Nano using the default Digi Embedded Yocto images to be updated with the Firmware Update framework. Let me show you the hardware that uh, we are going to use in this video. So this is the Connect Core 8 and Nano development board. And today it will be needed the power supply, of course, the console in order to have access to the U-boot and the kernel. And for today, in order to, to save the firmware update packages, we will use this USB stick. In order to find out the documentation that is uh, covering everything that I'm going to do today, we can start uh, going to DG web page, IoT products and services, system and modules, we can select the module that uh, we are going to use today, which is DigiConnect Core 8 and Nano. In the landing page, just click in support. And the first one, under the user manuals, click on the DigiMBD Yocto documentation portal. Here you will find everything related to the Connect Core 8 and Nano. And in our case, we are going to use DigiMBD Yocto. From here, let's click in Yocto System Development tab and in particular, update firmware and the topic of today, which is a firmware update or the secure firmware update, which both will use the same concept. Everything is covered here in this section, program firmware from, from Linux. First of all, let's have a look to the requirements. So the first thing that we need in order to implement this uh, firmware update is the recovery partition. Digi is programming in this recovery partition a Linux kernel, the device tree, but what is different with the main Linux partition is an init RAM FS. This special file system on RAM allows this uh, Linux kernel to be fully functional but without sitting down in any medium storage. That means that from here we can update whatever part of the EMMC that we would like to. By default, uh, Digi is, uh, has designed this update uh, firmware mechanisms in order to update the Linux and the root file system partition. The second partition that we need to, to work with this update firmware mechanisms is what Digi has specified as an update partition. Last but not least, there are some uh, recovery utils that will make your life easy and will help you to this and to set up these mechanisms. So there are two commands that you can use in the Linux command line. So the update firmware command that will trigger directly the, the, the firmware, the update firmware itself. But also there is another command which is called recovery reboot that will allow you to prepare everything before to launch the, the update firmware. I will show you later. If you would like to launch and to or to trigger all these uh, mechanisms from your own application, you might want to use the DG APIs which are included in the leaf recovery. So let's have a look to the partitions. Here we can see the U-boot prompt in the Connect Core ATM Nano and we can see 
which partition are already predefined by default. So here we can see the recovery partition and also there is an update partition. So this, is, this will be present every time that you are using the standard DG images that you can download from the DG servers. So let's boot the Connect Core Item Nano and I will show you where this uh, EMMC layout is explained on the documentation. So here in the EMMC layout, we can see that uh, the picture show us the recovery and also the update partition that we are going to use later. The next step that we need to do is to uh, create or get the firmware package in the SW form factor. So as it's described in the documentation, uh, this can be happen in two ways. The first one is to generate the package by yourself. So I will show you. Here, there is my Yocto project in my development machine. So the first thing that we need to do is to source the environment for the DigiEmbedded Yocto. Once we have it, in order to create the firmware package update, we need to use the same recipe name, but now we will tail minus SWU because DG has created a recipe which is doing exactly this. Once you have it, Bitbake will have a look and will start to create uh, all the artifacts and everything and will package in one big SWU file that we will use later in order to update the, in this case, the Connect Core Item Nano. I'm not going to wait because this can take uh, some time. So I can show you here on the on the project uh, folder. If if you wait until until the end and everything was was good, in the in the folder where you are getting all the artifacts that Bitbake is producing, you will find now a package which is tailed as dot SW. So this is the file that we need to update later our system on module. I'm going to use a, a USB stick, so I'm going to paste here this uh, firmware update package. This file was uh, downloaded from the DGFTP server, so if, if you want to try you don't even need to make any any generation or you don't need to, to touch Bitbake at all. So from the DGFTP server are also available those update packages. Once the copy process has finished, what we need to do is to eject or unmount the USB stick and now we can connect it to our Connect Core Item Nano and automatically the SWU package will be available to the Linux kernel root file system. Now we are ready, so we can jump into the console of the Connect Core Item Nano. So we can log in. And let me show you the update partition, which in my case is properly set up and the Linux is uh, recognizing it, but if not, remember that you have this recovery reboot command that will help you in order to prepare and arrange the update, uh, the update partition with the minus W, but also I would like to give you some hints about the uh, this parameter when you are using the secure firmware update. So this, uh, this parameter will give to the firmware update the key 
that will be used in order to encrypt the file system or the partition that you are updating with these mechanisms. And even more, if uh, the trust fence is properly enabled in the complete system, when you are booting from the recovery partition, the script will check the signature and the hash, which means authenticity and integrity of the SWU package before to make any update. So that's the main difference between the standard firmware update and the secure update. In my case, we are not going to use uh, the security features, so we are going to, to do only a standard firmware update. In order to show you, this is the Digimbedded Yocto version, which is running now on my Connect Core ATEM Nano, which is the 3.0 R2. So now I can plug my USB stick. Here we have it. Let me show you the SWU package that we just copy. Here we have. So let's launch the firmware. Let's use only one second. And remember that you need to always use the full path to the to the SWU file that you are going to program. Now the system is rebooting, but now the Linux kernel which is starting is the one which is contained in the recovery partition. Now uh, a healthy check is being executed and once this is uh, OK, the partitions that are going to be updated will be formatted and later will be updated with the new uh, content. Recall that you can trigger this uh, process in your own application using the Leaf Recovery API so you can allow to your user applications to launch this me to uh, these mechanisms from your own software. And last but not least, I would like to show you that this is a complete unattended mechanism. So the system will uh, update the firmware if for whatever reason the process cannot be finished the next time that the system will boot, uh, the recovery uh, partition will start and will try to, to update the firmware again until the process has been completely successful. You could see now on the screen how the Linux partition, which is smaller, was complete. Now the root file system, which is a little bit bigger. But once the programming process will be complete, the system will reboot using the main Linux partition. This is what is happening now. So this is the kernel log from the main Linux partition. And in order to show you that we have updated the, the system, you can see now that we are running 3.0 R4 and not R2 as we were at the very beginning. That's all from my side. Thank you for your attention and stay tuned for the next coming videos.